Hi, I'm Jennifer Newell, and I am coming to you from sunny San Diego, where I'm lucky enough to be tagging along with my husband while he's here for a conference. And while I'm in my hotel room, I thought I would uh, keep working and give you all an update about Betty's. Um, if you haven't seen any of my videos yet, I am documenting my journey to building Betty's, a women's healthcare company that provides young women with the care products and resources they need from period until family planning. In one of my last videos, I mentioned that I wanted to talk to you about Betty's target demographic in San Antonio, which is where I live and where we will build our first health boutique. Um, I wanna break this topic up into a couple of different videos, maybe three videos. And in this first video, I wanna talk about how I approached getting to know women, getting to know the market, and better understanding how they receive care. When I first started dreaming at Betty's, all I knew was that I wanted to change how young women experienced women's health. Before I even began to think about how I might do that, I wanted to learn as much as I could about the women we might serve. So I started looking into the various milestones in women's lives and how they intersected with healthcare. I found out that the average age for a woman to start her period is 12. And ACOG, or the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, actually recommends that a first gyno visit happens shortly after she starts her period. And so that age range for the recommendation is between 13 and 15. The next women's health related milestone is becoming sexually active. The average age for a woman to first have sex is 17 and about 40% of young women at 17 have sex. But between the ages of 17 and 20, that percentage of sexually active young women increases from about 40% to 80%, just above 80%. The other relevant lifestyle event is when a woman starts having children. Now the average age for a woman to have her first child um, is different based on her marital status. And so for women who are unmarried, that average age is 23. And for married women, the average age is 28. Now, in thinking about those lifestyle milestones, I wanted to map those to healthcare milestones for women. Um, I already mentioned that ACOG recommends a first gynecological visit occur between the ages of 13 and 15. That visit at that age doesn't happen very often. Um, from there, from 13 to 15, annual visits are recommended, um, and there are a number of screenings and exams um, that typically happen, and some of that is just conversation and understanding um, women's lives and, and making sure that they are maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Uh, pediatricians can support much of that, um, which is one reason that younger aged visit doesn't happen. However, the primary reason is because the most common, um, the most commonly known test for a woman is a pap test or pap smear. Um, this test screens for cervical cancer or abnormalities that can lead to cervical cancer, and the recommended age for this screening is 21. While the former age for this used to be 18, ACOG um, changed the age several years ago, I want to say back in 2010, 2011, I can't quite um, find exactly when it happened, to be completely honest with you. But, you know, probably about 10 years ago, they changed it. However, that age, um, those two ages now continue to dominate the referral system into gynecology. So women are often uh, told, well, at 18, go see a gynecologist. At 21, go see a gynecologist. Um, and then primary care physicians, pediatricians, can support them until then. Why does this matter? Well, it signaled to me that there is a gap. We are not following the lifestyle of women and introducing them into gynecology before some of these major lifestyle milestones. As I was figuring out how I wanted to create a better experience through Betty's, I realized a key would be to serve young women proactively. So before and throughout these key life moments. That's why I like to say we support women from period until family planning. We need to get these women in before they reach these milestones. So before they start their period, before they become sexually active, before they become pregnant. Um, and we need to build a trusted relationship with them so that we can help them to stay healthy and informed and empowered as they grow from adolescence into adulthood and build the lives that they want. After homing in on this niche market of young women, I continue to research it, of course. 
and I discovered that there is a significant need for behavioral health care services. Um, that's something I want to talk about a little bit later in a future video, maybe part three of this series, because in part two, hopefully coming to you next week, I want to talk about the numbers. So how many women are in um, this demographic in San Antonio, in Texas, in the Southeast, um, which is kind of where I will be focusing. Um, I want to talk about how those numbers informed, um, obviously, where we're going to build our first site in San Antonio, but then um, our growth strategy and how we're projecting that growth strategy. Um, so stay tuned for that. You won't want to miss it. Uh, subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Um, but as always, thanks for watching, and please let me know if you have any questions about what we're doing at Betty's, how I'm approaching it, um, and anything about kind of being a first-time entrepreneur. All right, have a great day.